Hello again, this is part two of the video on cyclotrons. Uh, specifically, we're talking here about accelerating the ions. Uh, there's two types of acceleration that go on here. One is the acceleration due to the magnetic field, which we're yet to talk about. The magnetic field is what causes the ion or, or proton, we were talking about protons, to move in a, in a spiral path or circular path. Um, it becomes a spiral because uh, each time the particle passes between the Ds, uh, it experiences the magnet, the electric field, sorry, and and accelerates or changes speed. So as its speed increases, so does its radius, and we'll we'll define why that is later. But so there's an acceleration due to that magnetic field towards the centre here. Uh, no change in speed, just a change in direction. And there's an acceleration due to the electric field. Let's draw a separate electric field here. Okay, imagine these are the, this is the gap between the Ds, uh, D1 and D2. And we have an electric field between the two Ds. uniform electric field or as uniform as I can draw freehand. We have our charged particle. I'm just going to say it's a positive charge there. Of course we were talking about a proton before so let's stick with that. It's a proton and define the direction of our electric field. That's its direction and, and knowing its direction we know which side is positive and which side is negative, sorry, negative and positive. Okay, so this charged particle experiences a force which is proportional to its mass multiplied by its acceleration. That's uh, Newton's second law. And I can rearrange that. A equals F on M. Easy enough. The force it experiences is also proportional to the electric field multiplied by the charge of the of the particle. In this case, so that was we'll say that's that's the magnitude or size of the E field, and that there is. Uh, charge of the charge of the particle in this case uh, proton charge uh, equals 1.6 by 10 to the minus 19 joule uh, big pardon coulombs Uh, and that's that's the same. That's exactly the same as the uh, electron charge or the magnitude of the electron charge. Okay, so knowing these two formula here, uh, a equals f on m and f equals e q, I can I can uh, set this up here. An acceleration due to the electric field multiplied by the charge over the mass. Um, and that says that uh, that the the acceleration is inversely proportional to the mass, and proportional to the size of the electric field and the charge on the charge particle. That should be um, that should be intuitive, I think. What is the electric field? Um, well, it's just it's the magnitude or the the size of this uh, of this of this thing that creates the force on the charge particle, and and we could draw it. We could draw it more, more powerful by drawing more lines per unit area if we wanted to. That's a more powerful electric field. That's how we, that's how we, how we, how we show it in a diagram. More powerful electric field. Um, <coughs> we can calculate E uh, knowing delta V and D. What's delta V? Well, delta V is is this potential difference here. Uh, I'll 
just write that in there, delta V, potential difference between the Ds, and D is the distance between the Ds. That's D there, how far they are apart. Um, okay, so let's define it. Uh, the work done in moving this particle across this electric field is equal to the force times the distance or displacement same as force times distance um, work is also um, work is also equal to uh, the change in kinetic energy uh, so how much work we do on the particle is proportional to the to its kinetic energy or its speed it's, its energy due to its motion um, we know F equals EQ W then equals E Q D the electric field multiplied by the charge multiplied by the distance between the D's um, work is also equal to uh, Q delta V for my students that's uh, th these formula are on your uh, on your on your formula sheet so I can define then from those two formula there I can say Q delta V equals to E Q D cancel the two charges the charge doesn't matter here and we're left with E equals delta V on D so the electric field and it's a it is a vector it has direction is equal to the potential difference between the D's divided by the distance between the D's. Uh, knowing the potential difference and the distance between the D's we can calculate the magnitude of the electric field and hence from this the acceleration of, of, of the particle when it passes between the D's. Um, so cyclotrons are used to accelerate particles uh, up to I, I'm not sure exactly, but I know uh, up to 10 million electron volts. Um, the, the original cyclotrons could only do maximum 1 million electron volts or something like that. Um, as a comparison, uh, the Large Hadron Collider can accelerate uh, protons up to about 7 uh, tera EV, which is 7 trillion electron volts, so uh, much, much faster. And, and at that speeds... Uh, the low speeds that we see in cyclotrons, we don't have to worry about uh, uh, relat relativistic issues uh, in the uh, in the Large Hadron Collider. Then we're talking about uh, speeds very close to the speed of light, and uh, and we have to take into account relativity. But I'm not going to show that. That's beyond the scope of what we're talking about here. So, thanks for watching.